I'm just going to come out and say it. Star Command isn't great. You probably came here expecting to hear me sprout undeniable facts about how the game sets new standards in mobile sci-fi strategy adventure. As though the game matured in the almost two-year development cycle to unmatched heights of technical achievement. This couldn't be further from the truth. Don't get me wrong, I didn't want to write this review. As someone who googled the words Star Command release date weekly, hoping to garner some new information about this fabled tale of space exploration and combat, I wanted the game to succeed. I first learned about Star Command via its very successful first round Kickstarter campaign. For those not in the know, Kickstarter is a crowdfunding platform for creators and inventors to bring their ideas to life with the backing of interested parties. It was here that I saw the very first teaser trailer and I was instantly hooked. Hooked, that is, without knowing anything about it, other than it looks amazing and that I have to have it. Fast forward a year and a half and Star Command's release date is announced. With the knowledge that the development team raised over $150,000 in a second run on Kickstarter, I was convinced that nothing could stop this freight train of success. Hype, it seems, can be a cruel mistress. The visuals are an eye-pleasing blend of hand-drawn set pieces and incredibly detailed pixel art. Occasionally, the appearance of both of these element types on screen at the same time can be a little bit jarring, but it works well otherwise. The music is worth special mention. Composed entirely by Marius Masela, it's simply stunning. It fills the listener with an epic sense of adventure, fear and solidarity. Music in a game hasn't stirred these feelings in me since Mass Effect, and that's no small feat. Clearly a lot of love and money has gone into the production value of this game, and as a result, the gameplay feels somewhat lacking. For starters, the game teases a huge open playfield with almost 30 different planets shown on the star map. However, only a small portion of these are available to visit. If you arrive at a new location that doesn't fall within the extremely linear storyline, an inescapable battle often ensues. That or some arbitrary conversation between your commander and one of the few alien races. These two seem to be predetermined, as no matter which dialogue options you select, the result is always the same. At every turn, the game seems to only give the illusion of choice. This is probably the biggest letdown for me, as I was hoping for a much less scripted experience. Diplomacy just doesn't exist in Star Command. Yet. Let's talk about combat. The game introduces mechanics at a good rate over the course of a few battles. You'll get used to firing your weapons, creating and using dodge tokens to avoid damage, and sending crew to take care of other issues that arise. Weapon firing is taken care of by playing a minigame with its result directly influencing the success of each weapon attack. The decision to run with the style of gameplay is questionable at best as there are far superior methods available. After the first few battles, things start to go downhill. The ships you'll come across are much stronger and fire at a much faster rate. The game deteriorates into hoping you can produce dodge tokens fast enough to avoid taking too much damage. When you get boarded, and you will get boarded, you gather all your squaddies and medics and hunt down any rogue intruders. Every single battle ended the same way as well. If you do manage to survive, you'll need to spend a fair amount of time healing your crew and mopping up fires. There's a light upgrade system in place for each of the rooms and crew, but because the tokens required to take advantage of these are quite hard to come by, they do little to change the outcome of combat. Ship layout also plays a vital role in the enjoyment of the game, but not in the way that you'd think. The starting ship layout is very straightforward, with combat and weapon modules at the extremities and engineering and med bays in the center. This is actually one of the more efficient designs, because it allows for quick defense when boarded and clean up after battle. The larger ships that are unlocked, while visually very appealing, are actually more troublesome to use. Their layouts don't allow ease of navigation, and for some reason the ships still have the same ceiling on crew numbers. Now the last thing I'll have to bring up is the fact that on smaller devices like the iPhone 5, the game is very difficult to interact with. Unintentionally sending crew to the wrong location was an all too common occurrence, which is not only frustrating, but in some cases can mean the difference between winning and losing a battle. Now, my job as a reviewer isn't always easy. On one hand, I have to be objective and view the game as a standalone entity. That is, a very shallow, linear space adventure with minigames sprinkled throughout. On the other hand, and more subjectively, Star Command is a charming, beautiful first attempt. Warbaloon have even admitted that the final product contains approximately 30% of their original vision. The positive of all this? Well, they are listening. 
They're taking user suggestions and support requests seriously and have promised many updates. With their first priority being bug fixes and stabilization and content updates a close second. I truly hope they can deliver. Yes, they set out with an immensely ambitious project and while Star Command isn't the massive success everyone was hoping, fingers crossed that future updates will enhance the experience. Star Command is available right now for iOS devices for $2.99 with an Android release in the near future. PC and Mac versions are planned, but we'll have to wait a little longer for those. Thanks for joining me for today's review. Remember to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest mobile game news and reviews. This has been Alex for GameMob, that's www.gamemob.com.